Hello, and welcome to what will probably be a two-part Miami restaurant review episode. Not sure how we got so behind on these. What happened? It's been since like May. Life. Life. But here we are. With me today, as usual, is my partner in crime, the Hubs. Woo! Ooh. Welcome. <laughs> and this is the first we are recording in a studio. How do you like it here? Very cool. Very yeah. cool place. Ne Nexus? Nucleus. Nucleus. <laughs> <laughs> Nucleus, very, very cool place. Yes. We have 16 restaurants to get to. Not sure if we will get to discuss Orlando, though. We're going to have to. We should. I know, but in detail. I, I actually didn't don't have detail notes for that, but we can Just maybe skim over it at the end. Yeah. So part one will be El uh, Amazonia, Elastica, Irán Bistro, Livelo, Itamay, Sereya, Gran Central, and Cruz. And part two, probably later on... Um, I'm not sure it will be in the following week or a couple of weeks after that. Will be Cogen, Torno Subito, Conroe, Conroe, Paya, Daniel's Florida Steakhouse, Sparrow, Amano, and Sunny's. That's a lot. A lot of food. Whew, it's a lot of food. Okay, ready? Sure. Let's get to it. First up, Amazonia. Located on Main Street, Miami Lakes, our old stomping grounds. I have to say this dinner ended up being a welcomed surprise don't you think yeah. yeah yeah especially for the area and um, Amazonia is a Nikkei restaurant Japanese Peru fusion it's on the smaller side um, jungle meets tropical interior service was casual but good I think I forget what it was that they started us with but it was like a house cocktail um, we took our wine uh, I don't know if you have those notes it was Saxum the menu is ample. We didn't order any of the nigiri, ceviches, tiraditos. No rolls, but the menu, it, there's a lot there. Since it was our first time, we ordered mostly from the isakaya section. Um, they also gave us an amuse bush, which it's fancy for Miami Lakes, right? Anahi amarillo with sweet potato, which was a nice touch. And the highlights on my notes were the orange shrimp, the corn ribs, with um, it was smoked furikake and a cevichada, and a cevichada sauce. The Pekin duck, orange honey, edamame, cocoa puree, and then the dessert. Do you remember the dessert? It was like a, it was a mousse, but it just looked kind of like a blob at first, and it wasn't very appetizing, but it was so good. They put um, pecans, Malden salt, and an olive oil drizzle, which didn't seem like none of that matched, but it went beautifully, and although it was just plopped on a plate. But at the end, I didn't care because it was so good. Um, and then a Nikkei flan. Con leche condensada and miso caramel. We had all that? We had all that. Do you want to see the pictures? <laughs> Starting off with a bang. <laughs> I didn't even remember how good the, the, the flan was until I went back and I looked at my pictures. And that was good. We really need to go back. It's worth another visit. Yeah, probably with our little one, uh, just because it's local, or at least closer than driving all the way to Miami. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it was good. Um, um, I remember... A very affordable $25 corkage fee, easy parking because it's, um, it's in downtown uh, Miami Lakes, so it's plenty of parking. Um, and we, we kind of like this kind of cuisine now, right? This is really what we're into, so it was pretty easy to like. Even the pecking duck, which I usually find to be too sweet when we go places, was, was really good. Um, yeah, I mean, it's too many new restaurants in Miami that you need to try based on what you do, and, and it's hard to sometimes go back to some of the older ones. Uh, but this one, uh, I think it's probably worth it, especially since it's so much closer to the house. Yeah, and I was I was surprised by how well they, ha they did the interiors. I could really... Good service, too. She was great. Yeah, it was really good overall, and we recommend. Yeah, um, absolutely. Great price point, good service, mm -hmm. good food. Um, you don't have to go all the way to Miami, so if you live in North uh, North Dade or South Broward, it's probably one of the better restaurants that we've tried so far in the area. In that area, for yeah, sure. Yeah, for sure. All right, up next, Elastica. First of two visits. We're actually going for a third Monday, a few days. Yep. This is located in the Miami Design District. The valet parking kiosk happens to be right in front, so that's convenient. Do you remember how much that was? It wasn't a lot. No, nah, I don't remember. Um, I thought that for the design district, I was expecting yeah, it to be. Yeah, it was be like $15. It wasn't expensive right, at all. Right, I thought it was going to be like South Beach prices, but it was not. 
It's on the first floor of the Moore building. It's a multi-story structure. I think it's about four stories with connecting beams in the middle that touch and connect with each floor, creating a very cool effect on a skylight above. It was, it used to be an event space and it was completely converted into a restaurant now. I, f I think they have three restaurants. I Is think this the one with Oscar and the elevator? Oh my gosh, yes. <laughs> 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 Maybe he listens, I doubt he will, but. Uh, Oscar, yeah. listen to the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Where is Oscar? Inside joke. Yeah. We went to a wine uh, event there, and wine and one of a wine and food event, and one of our buddies uh, kind of got lost in the shuffle with so, with so many people and, and so much wine. And then the elevator doors open. It's just funny. Wow. Anyways, <laughs> Oops, Oscar. maybe his wife will listen and tell him. Oh my god, that's actually really funny. Um, so um, it's completely converted into a restaurant, but I think there's three restaurants. I think there's going to be a. Um, one for members downstairs there's an amakase kitchen i think i don't know anyway the rest of the floors are for members only club and an upcoming boutique hotel the most important thing to take away from elastica is that the priority is not only sustainability and green practices but cooking and nourishing ingredients that aren't harmful for you or the planet so here you won't get a ton of butter sodium or corn oils for example but somehow they still manage to put out delicious food so that it doesn't feel, I just interviewed um, Chef Joe Anthony, it doesn't, it shouldn't feel like, oh, I'm going to a cheat dinner mm -hmm. because when you leave there, you won't feel bloated, you will feel really good about And where do you find this interview uh, if for and the listeners? And you find this interview in episode 55 of the podcast. It should be the last one out, but by the time this comes out, there should be like four more. So episode 55. So the dishes that have been the highlight so far, and again, we're going for the third time in a few days, but so far... The Florida tomato gazpacho, yes. you love that thing, and you you're not even like a gazpacho lover, but now I guess you I are. I am now. Well, Fiola started it, and then this was amazing, though. The pickled tomatillo avocado with a fennel Poland focaccia bread, the house-made squid ink coriquete. Don't kill me if I'm pronouncing it wrong. Um, artichoke with an artichoke puree and olive oil breadcrumbs. The slow smoked green circle chicken for two. Ridiculous. They bring it first and then they prepare it. Um, they bring it back table side. Ridiculous. Um, there's a fried version and a roasted version. It has an orange habanero glaze over a Castle Valley Mills cornbread. And now the most controversial part is the cheese cart, which we loved. Well, you and my wife is a sucker for a cheese cart. Yes, I think but it started at the. Uh, What's this? Uh, uh, Gary Danko's, right? It that did was start at Gary Danko. Yeah. But he, in the first thing, within the first two seconds of the interview, I asked him to confirm that the cheese cart is staying, and he's like, eh. Not, well, if it's not, not doing really. well. Remember, if he's it doesn't do well, cheese doesn't. He says there's still going to be cheese, but the cart is being. Presentation. It, it yeah. might No, it might be more of a dessert cart than a cheese cart. But So listen to that whole, within the first five minutes, we get into it about that. <laughs> but anyway. Also important to mention that this chef comes from a significant fine dining background. He was at Restaurant Danielle, um, the modern, and he was the chef de cuisine at Gabriel Cruther since it opened. All of these are two Michelin starred locations. You want to talk about wine and the service? Uh, yeah. Uh, so uh, we took our wine uh, for a pretty reasonable $45 corkage fee. Uh, mm -hmm. We do that a lot, and, and I'll, I guess rather than bring up this uh, every single time that I that I discuss a restaurant, I'll just say it once and and kind of get it out of the way. But <laughs> uh, you know, I'm a bit different than 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 the wet palate is in terms of uh, pricing. For me, is a is a big uh, part of all of this. Uh, but when I talk about pricing, uh, South Florida pricing, which is really a bit out of control when you consider you know our travels to Europe, and 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 they, you know we go to three Michelin star restaurants, and 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 with a twenty year old Barolo, you're paying you know six hundred bucks, and and that's the price of a wine bottle, at at an at a, at a for a good bottle at a, at any establishment in South Florida now. So, but I want to make sure that the chefs that are listening, because I don't give a shit about the listeners in terms of, of this of this opinion. Oh. <laughs> is I don't blame the chefs or the restaurant owners or the investors for the pricing. I don't have enough information to know uh, why the pricing is a bit out of control. I'm sure it has to do with rent and the price of products now in South Florida must be astronomic. And you know a lot of these chefs like to uh, stay local and buy from local farms and that carries a cost. Uh, so 
uh, when I refer to price, I'm not. It's not a, a negative comment about the the people who set the prices. I'm just a guy who has a job and a budget. And as much as I would love to go to the Starburns and the Ariettes and the Shingos and <laughs> the Sushi by Scratch, some of my favorite restaurants in South Florida, they've truly become special location restaurants because they're just have become for me at least, uh, not affordable to go as often as I would like. Um, so that's that's my only comment. And this particular restaurant, Elastica, is special. And the reason being special is because we've gone twice and our average check was under $300. And you don't find that uh, for that Which quality. Which is still a lot, but compared to well, everything else, of Yes, course. if you're going to compare it to Europe and all that, it's still a lot. But, no, it, just but within Florida. the South Florida uh, scene, it's actually quite quite well and reasonably priced for fine dining whether it's fine dining or not the product is great the service is great the space is great parking is easy and it's cheap uh and so i i really like uh uh i really like this place uh, you know we order a la carte i don't even know if they have a tasting menu not yet I not yet yeah uh, they are opening brunch but, this um, sunday by the way you know the gazpacho was amazing the the chicken was amazing the chicken was amazing the was and so then good. listening to your interview for me, that matters too. If I don't, if the chef doesn't come across as somebody that I particularly, I don't want to say respect because I would, I don't know enough about these people, but at least like, I don't support him as much, right? But this guy is easy to like, and so service was great. Uh, I think they had a pretty decent wine, li wine list as well. The second I don't, time, yeah, the first time they were, they were building it, right. and and it's getting built. So we'll see you on Monday, um, going with somebody who knows his wine. So we'll see, we'll we'll see what happens there, but. Uh, I recommend listening to the episode if you want to try this place, uh, just because it's 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 a solid. It's absolutely solid. and it's beautiful. The space is beautiful. Do we think it's getting a star? Oh, well, check back in January when I <laughs> discuss it further. I, I will say this. <laughs> I, February. I mean, and if if you've listened to me enough, you know that Michelin and me is you know it's I mean it's it's just. Uh, a complete and utter disagreement uh, between what they do and what I feel they should be doing. So will they get a star? I don't mm -hmm. know. Should they get a star, Correct. which is the, r the, r the, right, an the right question. question. Yeah. Um, I mean, the answer is because of who currently has a star, of course they should get a star, right? And I'm not talking about what everybody's thinking about, but there are other restaurants that have a star in South Florida that are make this one the serving. But who knows? I, I mean, I have no way of knowing. Um, well, that's a deep dive for the spring. Yep. Yep. All right. Up next, Idan, Idan Bistro. This is a small Basque-inspired restaurant in North Miami. We had just returned from Bilbao and San Sebastian, so the filming was perfect with, uh, the, sorry, we had just returned back from Bilbao and San Sebastián, so the, f the timing was perfect uh, with plenty of Spain palate memory. We were a hungry party of four, and our goal was to order the entire menu, and we did. Anything we didn't get that was on the menu is because they were the ones out of it. So one thing you will notice when you get the entire menu that here, and it's just like a little thing, it's not necessarily a bad thing, just a comment, um, when you get the entire menu, you notice the repetitive nature of the plating. And in this case, they went through a lot of microgreens yep. to top every single dish, even the oysters. Like every dish had the same microgreens. Is that bad? Is it good? Whatever. Just a comment. Um, we also won't comment in detail of the 19 dishes we had, but <laughs> the standouts were the steak tartare on a croissant toast the scallop carpaccio on a crispy parm toast that was a hit. The Basque cheesecake was phenomenal. And take that with a grain of salt because, again, we had just come back from Mecca, <laughs> San Sebastian. Sure. So, it, you know, we were probably being a little harsher than, than usual, but we liked those. It was good. Um, those are probably worth returning for. Service was great. The chef and owner and doer of all things. He was taking orders. He was taking care of whatever needed to be done, which is very commendable. He's also a psalm, which leads us to the wine. Remember what uh, we had there? Yeah, we had uh, Vineyard Danza, which we just had, which just had in, in, in Spain a few weeks earlier. We actually went to the winery in mm -hmm. Spain a few weeks earlier. So when I saw it on the menu, I ordered it. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, that's another thing with, uh, and this is the part where pricing seems to me 
like, do you really, and I guess that's where the, the, the restaurant owners make most of their monies in the alcohol, but, you know, a usual markup in a South Florida restaurant is like three times the amount of a retail, right? So it's a little bit ridiculous. You, I can bring a $100 bottle, pay $50 corkage fee rather than pay $350 for the bottle itself. This particular bottle was really well priced at $119 for a $58 bottle. It was really just doubled, so it's, it was a really nice price. Um, and if you've never had Vineyard Danza, uh, the 2017 is absolutely spectacular. Uh, the 16 is good, but the 17, which is the one that's now um, available, is outstanding. And I think we had two bottles. Yeah, yeah. I think we had two bottles. Maybe three. Uh, and the 19 dishes. Three because we brought one too. We didn't open it. We oh. we we drank oh, theirs. I do that a lot. I'll bring wine because yeah. a lot of these places don't have their wine list online. That drives me mm -hmm. insane. Now for a place like this, which is casual. On the casual side, I don't mind it, but if you're gonna open a restaurant and you're gonna charge what you charge and you have strict corkage fees, don't, you know, you can bring your wine, but you can't bring a wine that we have on our list. Well, if your list is not published, then right, it's kind of a, a, well, a that difficult apply thing. To this one, though, because it's no, small. of course, it's casual. And, but I do that a lot. I'll bring my own wine and then I'll look at the wine list and if I can support the restaurant by spending some money, I will. And this was a, a great buy. Um, and the 19 dishes, I just want to point out, we went with two people who are... I said it was part of your four. No, but they're also foodies. It's like, they, you know... Food and Because that's a lot. Fine. Because <laughs> that's a lot of food. It was a lot. But there weren't, like, huge night. It wasn't, like, 19 full-on courses. Yeah. Some were smaller. It was great. It was so, great. overall, it's a great little spot with tasty food and a lot of heart. And it is a pleasure to support it. Also, parking, I think, was just street side. Yeah. It was easy. Plenty of parking. Mm -hmm. So, all right. On to the next one. Li I don't know if it's Livello or Livello. Okay, or Live Velo, I don't know. We were, anyway, we were so excited to drive to this little gem in Coral Springs. We met Bruno when he was working at Tabolino de la, was it Note? De la Nona. De la Nona and Note, because it was mm -hmm. both sides. Um, it's coming that back. Was, that, I know. That was also in Coral Springs. Uh, it had closed, and it's about to reopen again. But we followed Bruno from the very start there, and to see him have his own place made us very happy. So, of course, we had to show up and go visit him, and we actually have to go back. Um, the menu is ambitiously large. But it always is with him. <laughs> with him, yeah. But these were the highlights. The crab fritters were outstanding. Goat cheese situation that I actually, I looked at the menu. I no longer see it. So I don't know if it's off the menu. You might want to ask. But it was baked and accompanied with uh, blazed tomatoes. It was so good. Um, the handmade fiocchi di pera, which we used to have at Tavolino as well. The risotto sapore di mare. And then my favorite, which was the dish I ordered, was the wood, um, wood roasted lobster. I am so happy i always look back at my coverage of all these because it's easy to overlook things when we dine out so much but one look at this video when i was reviewing for today's episode for this one and wow that was incredible i think i was giving everyone like try this try mine the wood um roasted lobster oreganata over a colossal blue crab risotto i remember not wanting it to end and then i'm not sure if i should give away my secret should i give away my secret what's your secret I guess give it, oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, why not? I don't know. Well, so when when uh, Bruno was a tavolino, sorry, Bruno, if you don't want to do these, I'm outing it, and now you're gonna, you might have to do it more. He introduced me to fried peanut butter and jelly sandwiches for dessert. And, oh, my God, if you're a peanut butter lover, yeah, this is it. So, so he knew you were coming, so he so had, he, knew he did one. He did, it's not on the menu. He it's did never one on the you. menu. Those are always off the menu. But so, but the secret is, if you want to have the secret off the menu item, you have to mention it because he has, he won't do it with just any bread and he, he has all these specific things that go into it. So, yeah. E easy guy to like, uh, easy guy to support. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, we went to his former restaurant owned by Eddie another hey. friend of ours um, for a while, for quite a bit. Um, and then uh, when he went on his own, um, obviously we, we, I think we went with my office manager, right? Yeah, yes. and, and her husband. And it was party of four, had a great meal, nice spot. It's um, not pretty, as- Pretty, yeah. It's pretty, it's not it's as big strip, as but it's, they it's, all it's are, aren't well they? We live in South Florida, everything's in a shopping strip. <laughs> True. Uh, yeah, I mean, $25 corkage fee, the couple we went with didn't, doesn't drink wine, so I think uh, Lori had um, wine by the glass, because she likes oh, her she Chardonnays, mm -hmm. and he, uh, actually, he had a red, they don't have a bar, I don't know if that's going to change, but at the time, because uh, her husband likes, um, yeah, he likes um, 
Well, if Bourbon. you say cocktails, he'll get upset. Yeah, he likes it neat, like whatever he okay. drinks, whiskey, whatever. And they, didn't ha they don't have a bar. At least they didn't at the time. So he had our wine. He drank a little bit of our wine. So great spot. I mean, again, too many restaurants. Hard to go back to some of these places, but uh, very affordable, extremely affordable. Mm -hmm. um, Case in point, we have 16 to talk about. If you're in <laughs> Coral Springs, uh, there aren't that many good restaurants there, in True. my opinion. This yeah. is definitely one to try and support. Yeah. All right, Itamai Ao. No surprise here. Longtime fan of everything by the Chang family. We went to Itamai when it was at the food hall, and then in Miami in the design district, then downstairs. Um, this was a long-awaited opening for us. Itamai Ao, meaning blue in Japanese, honors the sea and the very ingredients highlighted on the menu. Chef Nando Chang's menu features eight courses with one, two, three bites within each, inspired by the traditions of Japan, rooted in his Peruvian homeland, and influenced by his journey in Miami. Chang's uh, 3.0 interpretation of Itamai is bolder than ever. Why 3.0? Because they started at the food hall, oh, then the food they were hall. downstairs. Yeah, I forgot the food hall. Yeah. The flavors, as expected, evolve as the menu progresses, and it's not for the faint of heart. There's heat, lots of heat, citrus, umami, and unexpected nuances to taste and from which to experiment. A team of about six works in unison to prep, cook, and serve the counter mm -hmm. of ten, twice nightly. With great creativity and precision, this tasting menu is unlike any other in South Florida. It's located in Midtown Miami inside Mati's Restaurant by Sister Valerie Chang, who just won the James Beard Award for Best Chef South. Yeah. First in over a decade, I think, for Florida. I was going to fact check that, but I think, it, I think that's the fact. So Itamai's vibe is chilled, as signaled by the hip-hop playlist. Just lean back, take it all in, and enjoy. And real hip-hop. Yeah. Not, not what the bullshit they call today. Yeah. Yeah. Amen to that. Uh, yeah, I, he's, um, th first of all, so as, as these type of restaurants keep popping up all over South Florida, these, these counter, mm -hmm. uh, counter, yeah. uh, sushi or whatever, omakase kind of, um. Right, but his is not, re it's no, not. Understood, okay. understood. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, he's, if you've listened to me before, I reserve the word rock star for these guys that really, truly execute their their vision to perfection, and he is, he's, he's every a rock bit. star? Yeah, he's every bit. I mean, he, you know, he, he's, he's just, it's not a, what else, like 10 people? The counter's ten. not that big. Yeah, I think counter yeah. 10, yeah. Uh, but he's on top of all of it. Um, um, it's fun, it's interactive. It is fun. Uh, he's, you know, he's easy to like. Um, I don't know why they keep saying, um, I mean, it's been written as an omakase, and I get it. You letting well, you're, you're on a counter, and he's giving you bites. Counter. I get it, but when you think oma when Miami thinks omakase, they think it's all nigiri and all sushi, and it's not all. No, uh, no. We've been there, um, the the new one, uh, three times. I think maybe mm -hmm. yeah, three times, and it just menu changes, so you get new stuff. And um, I love it. I love the music. I love him. I love the food. I love the price point. Uh, for what you get, uh, we've ordered wine from him before. We've taken our bottles before. Mm -hmm. uh, it's forty-five dollar corkage fee, pretty normal in South Florida. Um, just yeah, I mean, absolutely love the place. Tell me who else you think is a rock star in Miami. Oh, uh, there's a few of those. I mean, uh, Pablo from Zids comes to mind. Beltran, um, particularly with what happened this week. This is in December, so it won't matter. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, clown. It's a clown show. Anyone who calls him, I mean, it's just a fucking clown show. The guy's a rock star. Um, you know, Jeremy's a rock star uh, from Stubborn, in my opinion. Um, there, I mean, there's not like a lot, a lot, a lot, but um, great chefs uh, execute their, their vision uh, to perfection, and that, to me, that makes you a rock star in this, in this, in this field. Um, so I'm sure there's a few more I'm forgetting, but I, I know the guy from Conroe. Oh my God, Jacob, fucking kidding me. Bicklehopped. What's his name? Jacob Bicklehopped. Oh my <laughs> God, bro. We'll talk about that one soon. Yeah, and and his wife, the sommelier. Yay, she's so a rock star. Sorry, Bishop, you got competition. Ooh. She's fucking incredible. She is. 
She's in oh, well, she's pairing. We're gonna talk. We're gonna get there. Okay. Okay. So I just wanted to close out with my absolute favorite um, of that menu is actually toward the end. It's the lukuma dessert with the candy cat mushroom and soy caramel. I strongly believe it should be the closer dish, Nando, <laughs> because right now it's that, and then there's a, a granita after. I feel like it should be the granita and then this dessert because it's wow. That's a strong end. Regardless, I love it. It's my favorite. Go check them out. Up next, Sareya. Sareya is the Portuguese word for mermaid. Located in Coconut Grove, Sareya by Chef Enrique Sapesua. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Of the Michelin starred Alma, two Michelin starred Alma in Portugal. Inspired by the Iberian coast, Sareya is led by Miami chef, the cuisine Miguel Massens. This is a former nave spot, which was dear to us next to, it's in the former nave spot, which was dear to us next to Ariette. They did a complete remodel. Um, it still has blues, deep ocean blue hues, touches of sandy whites for the room. The ambience is sexy, and sophisticated, and inviting. We have now been several times, and we really love it. The last several times, we love the wahu curado, the grilled octopus. I especially love the rice dishes. Shocker. The uh, arroz carabinero and the arroz de pato are solid and do not skip the bread service. The Angus beef tartare was uh, insane too this last time. That was the first time we ever had that one. Uh, uh, lobster serreia. A lobster serreia. Uh, it's, it's interesting because we're talking to, to the chef Miguel. So a lot of times the chef, so Miguel was uh, taken to Portugal several times to learn under the main Enrique, I guess, with an Enrique. H. Enrique. Um, so it's kind of cool, right? Because a lot of times these chefs come here, they they, they, they open a restaurant, con new concept or not, it doesn't matter, and then they hire a chef, they train him for however many long it takes, and there you go, well, no, this guy actually took him to Portugal, which is kind of cool. So mm -hmm. it's a cool experience for Miguel. He's doing a great job. I really like I really like Soraya. Uh, mm -hmm. um, you know, we've been there three times. Um, uh, we've actually ordered wine from there the last oh, time the last we've been, time, yeah. uh, and every check was under four hundred dollars. Uh, uh, the average was three twenty six, and again the average was uh, went up because of the one time that instead of taking our wine for a uh, fifty dollar corkage fee, we actually mm -hmm. ordered. I actually took wine that night as I do often, and right. then I look at the menu and figure out if it's if there's a wine I'm interested in that I can afford and so forth, and there was, he actually, if you remember, Miguel was like, how much uh, wine have you drank from Portugal? And right. I was like, not much. I think I had one or two bottles in my life. And so we started talking about it, and then he recommended a couple of them. It was a $200 bottle, um, and it was great. Um, if it grows together, uh, goes together. Yeah. Uh, I really like, uh, I mean, it's, uh, now they have, in the past they didn't have I don't think they always had a uh, valet. Now they have it through Ariad. Right. So it's an easy uh, parking, which in the Grove is not always easy. Uh, there's a, a parking area, a uh, lot, uh, a block and a half away from Ariad and all those places that are sushi by scratch and Ariad and Soraya and whatever else is over yeah. there, uh, the allocation room. Uh, With not, Felix. not the greatest place to walk, <laughs> not the greatest place to walk back to. Well, no, we're, on we're, we're talking about cruise today right we are so which is upstairs from los felix um so I, I i welcome the the valet especially you you go to, you go there a lot alone with your friends to the beltran uh, um, what? you always go to his restaurants sometimes alone in that area and it's nice that they have valet uh because walking oh like events the, yeah stuff. you've gone to re to the restaurant uh, with your friends and stuff too so no I, I you've been invited um uh someone's got to stay with a baby mm -hmm. The twelve-year-old, fifteen-year-old baby. Uh, really like it. I think Miguel's doing a great job. Um, I, if I had a, I don't love the furniture they chose. So weird. The so fucking. Yeah. And and what I think it's weird is it would have been cool if they would have done half of the restaurant with that furniture and then something a little more. But it's it's kind of strange. They're low, right? So you see everybody, right? They're they, mm -hmm. they're they're boots, but they're low, really low boots. Right. The basically. backs are yeah. low. It's pretty. Um, but you know, but and they are comfortable, which is a important. Um, so um, yeah, great, great spot, a great welcoming, uh, a great spot for for self-loaded dining. Very different. I think for 
it might, this might be the first time that we're doing a Miami review, restaurant review episode where pretty much every restaurant is getting a thumbs up, I think. Well, that's because you conveniently left out the ones that I fucking hate that you keep taking me to that I can what? very easily, I mean, okay. I'm not, we don't discuss return restaurants. You should. Yet. You should put a list and, and a really quick recap at the end of we've been back to this one, that one, the other, whatever. Where did we go back that you didn't like? Okay. <laughs> you could say it. I, I could edit it out if I don't want It's not it. that I didn't I like, like but I mean, <laughs> there's some restaurants that are just a, a complete, I mean, they're a clown show. I mean. What's a clown show? Robuchon. Oh. <laughs> that was not a clown show. The food was good. The food was good. Tell me what, you, what didn't you like about Robuchon? Uh, you didn't like all the dishes we had? You want to see all the pictures? It's not that I didn't like them, but the overall experience and the price point is just, it's ridiculous. Okay, but the dishes, the actual food we had was great. Okay. No, you didn't like the yes, food? Yes, but the price point matters because you it can does. get equally great does. food for half the price, a third. Uh -huh. um, and there's others, but that's fine. I mean, these are all the new ones we've been okay. to. It's fine. Okay, maybe that will be its own episode. Okay, and okay, so you said about valet. All right, up next, Grand Central. It's an odd location. It's a tiny restaurant. It's an odd location on Biscayne, right next to a smoke shop. Parking is rough to get to in that area. Um, but inside, it's a whole different story. It's tiny, 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 and charming. There's about only three, four tops and a couple of two tops, and seating at the counter for about four more. We wanted to try more things, but it was just us, and I really liked everything we ordered. The highlight was 100%. The almond gazpacho, it had Marcona almonds, cucumber, cantaloupe, and Granny Smith apple, and the crab cake, probably the best crab cake I've ever had. Um, I have never seen one this dense inside, and I mean, it was a pretty big crab cake, and everything inside was like 99% crab, delicious. And I also love the duck uh, PTVA. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. It, um, it was a Long Island duck, the confit duck leg, the duck breast, and a cranberry demi. It was delicious, and service was great. It was a pretty quick meal overall. Um, again, we didn't order a whole lot, but these were all these. All, it's not really a tasting menu, so it wasn't a lot of courses. It was everything we ordered was a significant size. Um, I thought service was great, and I would love to go back. I mean, it's it's not, um, yeah, that one. I, I don't prepare like my wife, so I had to actually. I'm googling images of the restaurant, see yeah, if I can I'll remember. Show I'll show you. No, it's fine. Six. It's fine. Uh, that's why I wrote the dates on these. So I could just pull up my fi my photos. Holy shit! I'm like, I didn't even remember being in this place. <laughs> You're like, I went. <laughs> what the hell? It's not <laughs> a bad looking. Wrong. It's not a bad looking dining room. We said, where do we sit? Oh my gosh! I'm gonna show you. Don't you remember the lady that didn't have shoes on? Oh, okay. I don't remember this restaurant. Okay. Was nah, lady. I do. Yeah, okay. yeah. okay. Th isn't it funny? Those are the things that you remember. What, the lady without shoes on next to us? But that's not the restaurant's fault. No, nah, no, of course <laughs> not. Okay. Yeah, now nah, I remember. Look. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, now nah, I, nah, okay. I remember. Yeah. And showing him photos. And look at my crab cake. Ah, yeah. That was good. But it was, again, it was pretty quick in and out. Um, every We liked everything we had. It's just a matter of going back and seeing... You know what else they have? Kind of restaurant Actually, you gotta go with somebody so you can order a few more things. But it's also very small, so it's. Um, they had tables for four. It's fine. Yeah, they did. Not that small. I mean, we've it's been tiny. just. I mean, it's smaller than Boya Day. Um. Yeah. I guess. And yet. But you didn't remember it, so that's. Not, but. No, but now I remember the space. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. But remember how parking? I don't even remember where we parked. I know you dropped me off and then you went off to park. So yeah. Well, I mean it. Yeah. It's you know, it's one of those, not, I don't know that there's horrible neighborhoods in South Florida, but, um, you know, it's one of those places that I'm not very familiar with, so a lot, oftentimes I'll drop you off at the door and go park and walk. Keeps so. me safe. <laughs> no, because something happens and I can just worry about myself. I don't have to worry about you. That's why Ay I do it. Dios mio. Okay, on to the next one. Cruise Miami. I have been meaning to try this, but given my um, previous or prior Los Felix opinions, I never made it a priority, but finally made it in. It's completely different than downstairs. The space is interesting. It's lofty, open, and airy. It has 80s-style glass block detail above that allows light to enter the room. A very casual vibe. Again, we couldn't order too much. Same thing, given it was just us, um, although the menu wasn't very very um, large the attention here is um, greatly to greatly highlight local products 
And when not available, then sourcing from sustainable and organic, reputable companies as much as possible. It has a green star from the Michelin Guide, so take that as you will. Many of our smaller restaurants in Miami are doing the same. I'm not or clear, more. Or more, but I'm not clear still what separates Cruz and Los Felix from the others, like Guy and Stubborn Guy um, Seed, for instance. I know they're big on, Cruz is big on using Zero Acres Farms Oil, um, grass-fed beef tallow, and Evo, um, extra virgin olive oil. Looking further into it, this is the most the guide, this is the most the guide and the chef had to say about it. Um, kitchen offerings that source from small farms and take aim at market-driven flavors and organic wines. Seafood um, as a frequent highlight, as an added bonus, a percentage of sales benefits, the group's nonprofit arm that aims to serve future community needs. Chef Sebastian Barga says we have partnered with a select local producer due to their expertise to focus on and keen understanding of the restaurant channels to foster milpa. The idea of milpa centers around the harmony of vegetables flourishing, the bio-nutrients of the farm, and the produce being grown. We also place a huge importance on supporting suppliers of local fish species. We only work with grass-fed, grass-finished meats, lamb, and heritage pork. Another major initiative for us is the elimination of using seed oils. Is that enough, you think, to have a green star over the other ones well, or again, side by side? Again, or, Michelin, you know? that's whatever they want um, in their category. That's their favorite line. So who, who the hell knows who they're giving it to and, and whatever. I'm this sure. one doesn't have a star. It has a green yeah, star. Green, yeah, whatever. I mean, I don't know. I mean, ne doesn't even have his own fucking farm. Yeah. I mean, and uses his vegetables and yeah. his homegrown, organic grown uh, yeah ingredients from his own farm for right. his restaurants, yeah, several that's restaurants. Where I think I guess the disconnect happens. But uh, whatever. I mean and and it's there Michelin's are fault. <laughs> I mean I'm sure there's plenty I mean we do know of many chefs that, that use the local farming and they and they right. uh, but whatever, it's fine. I mean I don't um, I don't begrudge. It's fine. I mean I don't I don't know this chef. Well that's why I put uh, the he's the very the nice. The, the official oh yeah of course the official notes of Michelin and the chef so I could he, put it out there, he was, besides my opinion. He's likable. He came out. I didn't. I met him, I think that might have been like only second time, whatever. And, and mm -hmm. yeah, he's, um, you know, cruise, the meal itself is fine. I mean, I don't, uh, you know, I judge a meal by, holy shit, I got to go back to have the chicken from Elastica or the start, the original fucking Jeremy took off the... <laughs> The, the no, the or, remember what oh. I used to like the very first thing you used to yeah, serve whatever the liver was thing, the yeah liver thing. and you know and you go back for for these incredible bites uh, that 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 stay in your memory whether right. it's a dessert or whatever and, right. and you want to go back for more I mean and, and some sometimes it's like the dumbest things like I one of my favorite things to eat is to go to um, the surf club and have their vegetable plat or whatever they call that at the beginning. You mean the thing they give you like like yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's just you love that thing. it's freaking great. <laughs> They're like you about know? to take it because there's one lettuce you know? left and you're like or, no. or Beltran's flan, whatever it is, whether it's Laurel, whether it's you know He's uh, gonna get mad that you don't remember his flan. You no, better remember something else from Ariette. Uh, his tasting menu is amazing. <laughs> it's you know he's he's it's the fucking guy the guy is Beltran, you know you, you don't fuck with Beltran. Okay back because to even when back to because even when he's <laughs> off, right? He's every chef has off uh, periods of time where, uh, you know, I don't know, whatever, they're not concentrated as much, or just maybe they're having a hard time sourcing what they want to source, whatever. The guy's still like presenting incredible food, some of the best food in, in South Florida. And for a time, it was the best food in South Florida that people also forget. Uh, but, anyways, now, uh, yeah, I mean, again, I like the chef at Cruz, but am I, you know, am I going to go? We went, we went, it was a $423 bill. You know, not exactly. Um, you know, it's, it's it's not it's not a cheap meal, and maybe it shouldn't be. I mean, it's a nice space and so forth. Um, it's not my. Again, I like that chef. I wish he did even more casual stuff. I, mean, I guess Los Felix is his really casual spot, but it's not cheap. I mean, fuck. I mean, you, the last time you went, you went by yourself, and you yeah. I think you blew like two hundred dollars by right. yourself by <laughs> at Los Felix. Yeah. Uh, but I feel like that guy is like he he would really do a really nice job with it in a in a much more casual concept and much more approachable I mean from a price point. Right, the concept is casual, but the pricing is not a, yeah. is not what you would yeah, think. Yeah, because it is, he's I guess he's sourcing the products that he sources are not cheap and so forth. Who knows? Uh, right. Yeah, I don't. Uh, you know, I'm glad to support him, but yeah. 
The main highlights, I think, were the porcini sourdough. It was served with a rocky rich grass fed butter and smoked salt. The smoked coconut rice with grilled colossal crab. I guess I was having a crab moment. Must have <laughs> the all these. You always have a crab moment. But these uh these three restaurants back to back with the crab and that's because if there's crab on the menu, you're gonna order it. That is true. Um, so that dish, of course, rice and crab, very good with trout row and the grass fed oxtail tagatelle was very good. I remember we commented that if we lived nearby, this would probably be a place that we would frequent, like yeah. casual. It's approachable with great flavors. That said. It's present like we said. It's presented as casual, but it's not cheap. The entrees range from forty two to sixty four dollars. Each yep. service was great, and the wine service. Do you remember the wine service was even better? Yeah, she was. Uh, yeah. I don't remember yeah. her name, but she was awesome. We were introduced to several interesting biodynamic. Look at us drinking biodynamic bottles that I would one hundred percent order again. Like um, odd um, cold grape combos that we've never had before, and I wish I would have um, brought the pictures yeah. of the wine be yeah. um, because they were really interesting. So that, that was a highlight for me, for sure, the wine service. I would definitely trust going there and having them either do a pairing or... I enjoyed it. If I had to choose between Los Felix and, and, and this one, I'd go upstairs. Same. And, um, and it's the same shops, right? But I just maybe just kind of like it, like the, the, the menu better maybe and the service. Uh, it's a little hot up there the time we went, I remember. It was a little, yeah, um, uh, but you know, high ceilings, who, you know, and stuff. A lot of windows, so who knows? Um, might have been a. It was during the summer too. So, all right, can we talk about coaching now? Okay. Well, actually, please hold that thought, because this is where we wrap up episode part one of the episode, and then we will do a part two. So. Se acabó. This concludes part one of the Mega Size Restaurant Review episode. Tune in next week or next time. I'm not sure when the next second part will um, drop, but we will be reviewing Cogen, Torno Suito, Conroe, Paya, Daniel's Florida Steakhouse, Sparrow, Amano, and Sunny's. Damn. Damn. Boom. So thank you for listening. Bye. Bye, everybody. Bye.